Hold it. I speak. Richard! Hey everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome to Watch Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 surprising cameos in reboots and remakes. I am your redeemer. It is by my hand you will rise from the ashes of this world. Hell is overflowing and Satan is sending his dead to us. Spock, in this case, do yourself a favor. Put aside logic. Do what feels right. For this list, we're looking at the most unexpected cameos from original cast members in new productions of their old work. Can you think of a notable cameo that we missed? Be sure to let us know about it in the comments. All right, let's get to it. Number 20, Michael Caine, Get Carter. Small world, isn't it? Very. Fresh off appearances in Alfie, The Italian Job, and a few other notable films, Michael Caine was the natural choice to play Jack Carter, a hardened gangster who investigates his brother's death. While working on the film, the actor drew on his own experiences to play the criminal with a hard edge, as he'd come from a blue-collar background where many of his friends were involved in lawbreaking. Well, it's Carter. That's my name. And her father was my brother. And he was murdered last Sunday. When the film was remade with Sylvester Stallone starring as Carter, it seemed only natural to pay homage to the original. And so, Michael Caine was brought back to play another important role this time around. Remember, you kill me, you'll be on the run for the rest of your life. It's been nice knowing you, Jack. Number 19, Sean Connery, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. The story of Robin Hood has been told time and time again. Some of them are more noteworthy than others. The 1991 version starring Kevin Costner did fairly well and brought in a worldwide gross of almost $400 million. <laughs> Aside from box office success and a massive hit from Bryan Adams on the soundtrack, the movie also gives a nod to a previous incarnation of the Robin Hood tale. Sean Connery made a surprising and brief appearance as King Richard near the end of the movie. I will not allow this wedding to proceed. My lord. Unless I'm allowed to give the bride away. You look radiant, cousin. No. <laughs> Connery himself also once played Robin Hood in the 1976 film Robin and Marion. Number 18, Ken Forey, Dawn of the Dead. Any classic movie from the 1970s is prime material for a 21st century remake. Dawn of the Dead, a zombie movie released in 1978, was just such a film. In the original, Ken Forey played a major role as Peter Washington. I heard his gun. Maybe he's all right. We'll just wait. He managed to survive the zombie attacks by the end of the movie. After the world made the undead popular again in the early 2000s, it was no surprise to see Zack Snyder redo the movie in 2004. What was a surprise was to see Ken appear in the remade version as a televangelist. When there is no more room in hell, the dead will walk the earth. His videos about the end of the world constantly play out in the background. Number 17, David Hasselhoff, Baywatch. Which Mitch did Baywatch love more, David Hasselhoff or Dwayne Johnson? If you never saw the original TV show, then you'd probably vote for The Rock. Hasselhoff was widely known for his time on both the original Baywatch show, as well as its spin-offs and made-for-TV movies. I just thought I'd remind myself of what I might be missing when the onslaught of summer starts. Of course, fans wondered if the original Mitch would pop up on the big screen. Sure enough, we got the cameo we wanted when the two shockingly meet away from the beach and inside of a Sprint store. As old Mitch speaks up, you can clearly hear the original TV show theme begin to play. It's there we then see the new Mitch get some sage advice from the original. Mitch? Yes, Mitch. Come on, man. You don't just protect the bay. You are the bay. Mitch, the bay needs you. Number 16, Robert Mitchum, Gregory Peck, and Martin Balsam, Cape Fear. 
Sometimes a different director can take the same story with the same characters and give a different take. When Martin Scorsese decided to remake the classic Cape Fear in 1991, he did so by capturing its very essence while still creating a new piece of work. That's not good enough, Mr. Bowden. Now you're a lawyer, you damn well know that. Scorsese provided a distinct set of cameos in his version. Robert Mitchum, Gregory Peck, and Martin Balsam had major roles in the original version. Just as God arose to judgment to save all the meek of the earth, I hope and pray you will do the same. All three returned to make cameos in the new film. Although they played minor characters this time, they were still shocking to see. Number 15. Richard Hatch, Battlestar Galactica Richard Hatch starred in the original Battlestar Galactica TV show from the late 1970s. Ever since its cancellation, he'd been trying to get a reboot off the ground. In case it eluded you, Counselor, some hundred people have died since our deliverance from the Cylons. Despite his efforts, his version never made it to air. However, Ronald D. Moore did manage to reboot the show to much success. As to be expected, most of the main characters were recast. But the show couldn't go on without including at least one nod to the original. Knowing this, we were still pleasantly surprised when Hatch was recast as Tom Zarek for the reboot. Thank you for your offer. We respectfully decline. His character would ultimately play a pivotal role in some of the political plotlines of the show. Number 14. Dan Aykroyd, Ghostbusters when an all-female cast, unrelated to the original stars, was announced for 2016's Ghostbusters, there was a lot of buzz on whether or not the story was being true to the original. Whatever your opinion of this outing was, it certainly did its best to stay close to the initial tone. Wow! This place is great! When can we move in? You gotta try this poll! I'm gonna get my stuff! It also took care to include cameos from many members of the original Ghostbusters franchise. One of the best ones was that of Dan Aykroyd suddenly popping up as an NYC taxi driver. As Aaron Gilbert tries to flee a myriad of ghosts, the taxi driver refuses to take her in a series of quick quips. Look, I don't go to Chinatown, I don't drive wackos, and I ain't afraid of no ghosts. We wish he would have followed up his sudden appearance and joined the fight against ghosts. Number 13. Richard Roundtree, Shaft Back in 1971, Richard Roundtree starred as the title character in Shaft a movie praised for black representation in film. Two additional movies sharing the same name were made in 2000 and 2019. Although both are technically sequels, as Samuel L. Jackson played the character of Shaft twice, we do get appearances from the original Shaft in the form of different relatives. Wanna back me up? Back you up. Roundtree plays the uncle to Jackson's Shaft in 2000 and the father to Shaft in 2019. The actor shows up both times when you least expect it. But what's most important is that the newer films still maintain a connection to the original cast. Get off my back, huh? I just want to talk to you. Call me up. You know my number. Number 12. Hugh Keyes Byrne, Mad Max Fury Road With Tom Hardy taking on Mel Gibson's iconic role as the titular badass, it was up to Hugh Keyes Byrne to tie the fourth outing to the original. Well. Our little mother. In Fury Road, Keyes Byrne plays the character Big Batty in Morton Joe, while previously in the first Mad Max film, he had played another villainous character, the motorcycle gang leader with the pleasant name Toe Cutter. The intervening 36 years helped to significantly improve Keyes Byrne's acting skills, leading him to a memorable performance and allowing George Miller to pay homage to the earlier movie without Gibson. Where is she taking them? She didn't take them, they begged her to go! Where is she taking them? Number 11, Chris Sarandon, Fright Night. In the first Fright Night film, Chris Sarandon gave a surprisingly layered, yet still bloodthirsty performance as vampiric villain Jerry Dandridge. You deserve to die, boy. Of course, I could give you something I don't have, a choice. Nearly 30 years later, he returned, but this time the vampire gets him. Playing the cameo role of JD in Fright Night 2.0, the character's initials are a nod to his original character's name, who in 2011 was played by Colin Farrell. Staying true to the spirit of the original with its signature humor and horror, 
The inclusion of Sarandon was one way filmmakers tried to appeal to existing fans of the series. And it worked. What the hell do you think you're doing? Hey, no! Stay in the car! Well, you stop in the middle of the road, you got a tail light out. I can't wait! Yeah, yeah. Number 10, Dwight Schultz and Dirk Benedict, The A-Team. Any TV series that did well in the 70s, 80s, and 90s was prime material for a movie version. Frank Lupo's The A-Team seemed like an easy action movie to put on the big screen. The show was massively popular in its heyday, lasting for 98 episodes. Colonel, I'm afraid I have some terrible, terrible, terrible news. What happened? Dog Billy get hit by a car? Worse. When the silver screen version hit theaters in 2010, original fans were praying for a cameo or two from the original cast. Both Dwight Schultz and Dirk Benedict, who played Murdoch and Face respectively in the original, got quick cameos during a post credit scene. But how do you protect the face? Eh, you don't mess with it, kid. Gotcha. Although we would have liked to see them in the movie proper, their last-minute appearances still caught us off guard. This guy Murdoch is nuts. I wonder if he's nuts or are these nuts. Number 9. John Wesley Shipp, The Flash When the CW launched Arrow, they had no idea an entire universe of shows would follow. Barry Allen's appearance on the Green Tone show foreshadowed his own outing to follow. But it wasn't the first time The Flash had been on television. In 1990, The Flash ran with John Wesley Shipp as the main character. You're in extreme danger every time you use your speed. There's five squads of cops about to meet a mob of armed convicts. You need my help. Not this time. Lasting only a single season, it was largely forgotten by all but the most hardcore fans. However, the 2014 show brought him back as Barry Allen's father. But that's not all. He was on and off the show in several surprising appearances, including running in his original Flash costume. Flash? Flash. Here, put these on. We need to talk. The show solidified this great link between old and new with an unexpected recurring cameo from his former scientist assistant, Tina. Number 8. James Garner, Maverick There was a time in Hollywood history when westerns were all the rage. The 1950s gave us a great comedic western TV show called Maverick, starring the late James Garner as Brett Maverick. At 124 episodes, it's a show that certainly had staying power and kept folks entertained. You can't talk right side up, but you're going to talk even if it's inside out. In 1994, a movie based on the TV show was commissioned with Mel Gibson playing the part of Maverick. The fantastic movie gave us a couple of great cameos, like Mel Gibson's Lethal Weapon co-star showing up for an awkward robbery. But original actor James Garner stole the show by appearing as a marshal who becomes entangled in the plot. Cooper, Zane Cooper, folks call me Coop. It suits me just fine. We certainly didn't expect him to get as much screen time as he did. Number 7. Paul Michael Glazer and David Soule, Starsky and Hutch As a film, the remake of the classic detective series stayed reasonably close to its roots, featuring familiar characters and the Ford Torino that just screams 70s, with a lot more laughs thrown in. Marie Antoinette was the greatest money-making horse of all time. I guess I didn't think they said horse. While Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson did a good job with their take on Starsky and Hutch themselves, the film would be incomplete without a shout-out to the series that started it all. And we got one with the original TV actors both dropping in to hand over the keys. The speaking parts for the two veteran actors helped give the remake a seal of approval. Go on, give me keys. Number 6. Lou Ferrigno, Hulk, The Incredible Hulk While a lot of younger viewers might not have seen the Green Giant's original outing in the late 70s, many might recognize Lou Ferrigno nonetheless thanks to his Hulk-related cameos. In Ang Lee's 2003 take, Ferrigno appeared beside Stan Lee as a tight-shirted security guard. As far as I'm concerned, security ought to be big. Good morning, Dr. Prenzler. Security ought to be beefed up a lot more. In a place like this, you can't be... And in the 2008 version starring Ed Norton, he turned up as a security guard once again. Of course, you might also know Ferrigno's voice as one of many that makes up the Hulk's growl in the Avengers movies. Though it is a small part, he injects the role with real fury and helps connect the franchise to its roots. 
the Hulk is just not complete without him. You are the man. God bless you, brother. Number 5. Burt Reynolds, The Longest Yard Fans of the 1974 film about a pro quarterback who winds up in jail and ends up leading a team of convicts in a prison football game got a pleasant surprise when Burt Reynolds showed up as coach Nate Scarborough in the 2005 remake. You look like you could use a little help. No offense, my man, but uh, you're a little seasoned. Seasoned? I'm not asking to play. I'll coach. I'm Nate Scarborough. Unlike some of the other films on this list, where the actor shows up for a brief walk-on appearance, Reynolds' new role is a substantial one. He stars as the coach who corrals the ragtag team together, and he gets a bit rough and rowdy with the cast of boot, insisting on doing some of his own stunts. Number 4. Johnny Depp, 21 Jump Street most of the cameos on this list were designed to pay tribute to the source material, and 21 Jump Street is no different. Well, for the most part. It's not against the law to be afraid. So why don't you just leave me alone, all right? Okay. But what happens if they come back? While the 80s series on which Johnny Depp got his big break featured more drama than comedy, Depp decided that if he were to return to the franchise, he'd like to have some fun. Not only did he insist on having his former co-star Peter DeLuise come back with him. Come on, you guys are Jump Street? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's funny because we were actually Jump Street. What? That's yeah. crazy. Oh, yeah. 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 He also forced writers to kill them both off. The filmmakers obliged, creating a memorable scene that proved the films did not need to be shackled to the past. Number 3. Leonard Nimoy, Star Trek Leonard Nimoy had a love-hate relationship with his most famous character early in his career, as evidenced by his autobiographies I Am Not Spock and I Am Spock. Lieutenant, my demonstration of concern will not change what has happened. But he softened his stance and reprised the role of the beloved Vulcan several times during his career. But his appearance in J.J. Abrams' Star Trek reboot went beyond a mere cameo. His involvement kickstarted the entire plot. James T. Kirk. Excuse me? How did you find me? He appeared briefly in the next installment, Into Darkness, but sadly, his death in February 2015 means that those were some of his final roles. But what a legacy he left. Number 2. Charlton Heston, Planet of the Apes Tim Burton's remake of the classic Ape-em-Up may have left a lot of fans wanting more, but they were certainly satisfied with some of the notable shout-outs to the 1968 original particularly Charlton Heston's performance as Zaius. In the time before time, we were the slaves, and the humans were the masters. Since this was one of Heston's last film roles before his death, it's fitting that it referenced something from his career heyday. However, we cannot ignore the delicious irony that Heston himself is now portraying one of the damn dirty apes. Take your stinking paws off me, you damn dirty ape! Can you think of any cameos that we've missed so far? Do you think it'll be number one? Let's look through some honorable mentions, and then we'll name the most surprising cameo in a reboot or remake. And I gotta say, I was surprised. Kevin McCarthy, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. McCarthy surprisingly ran back into the remake after starring in the original. They're coming! Listen to me! No, Listen! Back, Help me! Do it next, please! Please, you're an expert in danger. Please, listen to me. The Lost in Space cast, Lost in Space. June Lockhart appearing as principal in the film was one of several shocking cameos. I know your life is anything but normal right now, but wasn't there some way his father could have attended the science fair? Jacqueline Smith, Charlie's Angels Full Throttle. Original Angel Kelly Garrett was a literal vision in the 2003 film. Hello, Dylan. Don't you have a case to solve? Linda Carter, Wonder Woman 1984. Carter stunned us with a mid-credits cameo as a new character. It's just a simple shift of weight. Takes practice. But I've been doing this a long time. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Bill Murray, Ghostbusters Murray was not the first Ghostbuster on this list, but he is number one. 
We came, we saw, we kicked its ass. There were quite a few others that popped up from the original cast. We previously mentioned Dan Aykroyd's cameo appearance as a cab driver, Sigourney Weaver also showed up as a mentor, Annie Potts was a receptionist, and Ernie Hudson got in on the action as a relative. But the best cameo came from Venkman himself, Bill Murray. He surprisingly appears as a non-believer in spirits and such. It's funny getting to see him play against what his original character spent so much time defending. Why are you pretending to catch ghosts? If we're lucky, we'll get to see him again in Ghostbusters Afterlife. Speaking of Ghostbusters 2016, there is a sort of Egon cameo in that movie, even though Harold Ramis passed away before the film came out. There is a statue in his likeness in the movie, which I thought was really cute as a huge Ghostbusters fan. Anyway, which cameo in a reboot or remake made you do a double take? Be sure to let us know in the comments or come tell me on Twitter or Instagram at Rebecca Brayton or on my YouTube channel. See ya!